All right, so first off, I think this uh, guide that you have, your user's manual, is going to be really useful for you because it does go through how to actually operate and view a slide. I think it begins on page seven. But I kind of wanted to go through some of this with you because this little microscope is a, is a little bit different than the microscopes we would use in class. Now, the lab module one is open. It opened uh, last night at midnight. And the reason, part of the reason it did not open until last night is because now the labs sequentially, if you complete the first lab module and then you start the second lab module, they're gonna take you about nine to 10 days working on them a little bit every day. Once you start to grow the organisms, which are all in lab module two, those organisms, you have to keep them alive to do all four experiments. Now, most of the time it's a simple, you do one thing and then in a couple of days, a day or two, you're gonna observe your results, but you can't throw the bacteria out and they're not going to live very long unless you keep providing them with fresh media. So it will take you, and now we have exactly two weeks and a few days before Thanksgiving. And then we have another set of two weeks and a few days after Thanksgiving for you to get these finished. Both of the lab reports will be due December 12th. So on our little microscopes, they come without the batteries and then I'm sure you've all already installed your batteries. And there's two different light sources here. There's one that um, projects from outside the microscope. That's for looking at uh, large specimens, like if you wanna look at the brine shrimp, for example. We're mostly gonna be using the light source when it comes from underneath, whoops, I had it the first time, sorry, where the light source is gonna come up from the bottom here. Now you'll notice you don't have an iris diaphragm, but what you do have on your microscope is a set of filters here. And it acts like an iris diaphragm in that the holes or the amount of light that is allowed to come through this one, for example, all the light is coming through. And then you can see maybe that that's a little bit less light. So myself, if I were you, I would pick the one that allows the least amount of light to come through to start with, because I don't want to blind myself. And then these are the objective lenses here. And do you hear how they're clicking into place? If they're not clicked into place, you won't see anything. Okay, so there's, you can turn them with this little dial or you can just turn them like I was turning these are the objective lenses. Okay, your microscope comes with a 4x objective, which is the shortest one, a 10x objective, and you know that because it says right there 10x, and a 40x objective, which is the one with the blue ring on it. We're going to always begin with the 4x objective in place, and we need to put our ocular lens into place. So we're take this cap off. And we're going to pop this lens came in the little box with your microscope accessories. I'm going to take this lens out, this ocular lens. It is 10x. And we're going to put that into the compartment there so that now when we look through this microscope, we have a magnification of 10x here and 4x here, which gives us a total magnification of 40x, 40 times the size of life. If I change my objective lens to the 10x objective, I still have 10x up here through my ocular and 10x down here for my objective lens. That will give me a total magnification of 100x or 100 times the size of life. And my third objective is the 40x objective. And if that is in place, if the 40X objective lens is in place, I still have 10X magnification up here, 10X, 10 times 40 for my objective lens would give me a total of 400X. For all of your drawings, I'm gonna ask that you draw the specimens that you see as you see them both at the 10X objective or at 100 times the size of life, as well as 40 or 400 times the size of life. But again, we're always gonna start with the lowest power. These are our focus knobs and unlike the compound microscopes that we would use in the laboratory, we only have a coarse focus adjustment. We don't have a fine focus adjustment. 
which would be a smaller knob out here on the end. I think that's depicted in the picture, as well as in the pamphlet that I posted that's just about how to use the microscope. So in your kit came this little box that has slides in it. And these slides are plastic. The slides you're gonna make for the gram stain are not, they are glass. But for this exercise, I would like you to look at the wool, which is gonna basically impersonate our string, the onion bulb, so you get plant cells, and the frog blood smear. Um, also, I put in the directions for you to observe some bread mold, and on the bread mold observations, I think you might want to observe them both with the light source coming down from the outside, because the bread mold is going to be quite large. You might want to put it in this little container to do your observation, or if you want to take some out and put it on it to tease it out with your forceps here and put it on one of these blank slides then be sure that you put a cover slip over the top of it because there's a little box of cover slips in here as well. I think if I could open it, you wanna put a cover slip on there so that you don't get the mold on the lens of your microscope. So let's take a look at the wool first and we're gonna, you would go through this procedure with each of the slides. You wanna be sure that you position the slide so that the label on the slide is facing upwards. You wanna not put it so that it's face down, you want it to be face up. And myself, I would recommend that you do not use the slide clips, uh, the stage clips rather. I would put the wool under there and I would just try to be careful not to move, to bump the slide all around. And then I would, you wanna position the wool directly over where the light is coming from underneath where the hole in the, in the stage is basically. Then I'm gonna take my readers off here and I'm gonna put my eye up to the um, ocular lens and I'm gonna just adjust the focus a little bit. It's very bright. So I'm probably going to try to turn the light source down a little bit. So I'm gonna change my iris diaphragm here until it's, there's some different colored backgrounds, blue, yellow, red. I don't know what the point of that is really, but I'm trying to make it so that the light is not quite so bright, but it's the best I can do. And then I would make a drawing of this in my little circles on my lab report page. I will post, there is currently in the um, general lab the from Carolina about just microscope use, there is a page that has lab circles on it. I'm going to upload a separate page that just has the lab circles with a place, both for you to write the name of the specimen above it and below it to flow magnification. So you can make your drawings now and then just kind of hold on to them and either put them in there or, and then scan them and upload them. Or there is uh, directions for how to take a photograph using your phone through the, eyepiece of the microscope. I think it works fairly well. I haven't tried it with my phone in, in this microscope, but I think you can do it pretty well. So you can just do this and you can put it right over the eyepiece and, and change the magnification as well as and you can actually get an, an image. So you can photograph it and upload those instead of doing drawings if, if you prefer. I would like you to look at this, both specimens, both at the 100 magnification and the 400 for your drawings. So you need to change it up first to the, now I'm increasing my magnification to 10X. All right, so the 4X objective basically just helps you find your specimen. Sort of it's an orientation lens. And then I'm gonna go all the way up to my 400X objective and I should just have to adjust my focus a little bit and I can see even more detail, right? That's it. When you wanna remove a slide from the stage, my advice would be to put the stage all the way down and then remove the slide so there's no chance that you can break it. I know these are plastic slides, so you're not gonna break these, but when you do a gram stain and a simple stain, when you do a simple stain first and then a gram stain, you will need, you'll have real glass slides. They're in a film wax box. 
in the bag with the uh, staining lab. So they're wrapped up, I think, in this container. All right, so these are the slides. And on that case, in this case, you will not use a cover slip. No cover slip on these, okay? You'll do a simple stain first and then a gram stain and all the reagents are in here. But you have to grow the bacteria first. So I'll do a little demo of how to rehydrate the bacteria um, maybe later in the week because most of you will still be working on the microscope lab. So I would do my wool, draw two pictures, one with the 10x objective, one with the 40x objective. And then I would ask you to put in your um, onion so you can take a look at some plant cells. See how this is. So notice how I just slowly, because if you go super fast, you'll zip right past what's focused. So you want to just slowly pull it up. Oh, there's a big plant cell. And then we'll look in here, and again, I'm just adjusting the fine focus a little bit. And all the way up to the 40x objective or 400 times the size of life. And I can see some cells, and I also see a lot of air bubbles in this preparation, probably because of the plastic slide. So it's not great, but draw it. And then um, I would also take a look at the frog blood. Um, frog blood, I would remind you, if you took bio one, you'll remember this. Frog blood cells, red blood cells have nuclei. So it'll look a little strange because human blood, red blood cells, if you've looked at those online or through a microscope, human red blood cells, of course, have gotten rid of their nuclei. They've been ejected, so they don't have nuclei, but um, frog red blood cells have nuclei. So you can see those in here as well. I would ask that you grow some mold. Uh, how to grow the mold is in your book, in your little booklet here. You can skip the brine shrimp. I mean, that's just kind of a fun thing if you want to do that. Uh, this came with the brine shrimp and um, these slides came with the microscope as the starter set, so we couldn't not order them. I emphasize growing the mold because mold is fungus and fungus is part of the organisms that we study in microbiology. So I would encourage you to follow these steps to grow some bread mold. And then again, I would tease some of the bread mold out and put it in a little water on your one of these blank microscope slides. And then I put a cover slip on it and I would take a look at that and also draw it or photograph it at 100x and 400x. 